Big shout out to some of the Feezy family members. Before we get into the video, randomly picked Ashley Mitchell, Victor P, CC, and my boy Alan Stokes out of Valdosta. Big shout out to y'all, man. What the Feezy? <laughs> I know I told y'all before like about the gangs on the inside about how you know the gangs pretty much run everything. It's all about gang. Like I've even told y'all about how sometimes it got to do with where you from or you know you would be referred to this or that based off where you from and how you might be treated. But overall it's a gang thing. The gangs pretty much runs everything in the prison. It's always every time it's an issue. Is about the gangs. Every time somebody get put on the door, almost every time they got something to do with the gang. It's just a whole lot of gang stuff in there. So I wanted to tell y'all about being cool with somebody, being a part of one gang and being cool with a person that's in a whole nother gang on the inside. Now I know I touched on it a little bit, but I didn't really go in depth with it like I'm about to go in depth with it today. Now, it's like this. I guess some people look at it like it's cool or whatever, but at the same time, it could be a very dangerous thing. You know what I'm saying? Because it could be like this, bro. And it, it, it's really hard for people that's in that position because if, okay, if I've been knowing you, okay, and then we both end up going to prison. I've been knowing you before prison, though. And we both end up going to prison, and I'm GD, and you're, let's just say, a blood. And then we end up at the same prison in the same dorm. I guess it's like cool. Like, yeah, that's my homeboy. Boy, I've been knowing you. Yeah, we cool. We rocking with each other. But what about in a situation where the GDs and the bloods get into it and it gets big to the point it's out of your control? What do you do then? You know what I'm saying? You're going to slide on your homie that you've been knowing way before you met any of these dudes around you? Or... You not going to slide on him or what? Now, you know, you say, man, I grew up with bro from the sandbox. I ain't sliding on him. Then that's what conflict could come in for you at. Because the guys around you could be like, I'm saying, so you choosing another group over your home group? And then that could cause you to get beat, stabbed, hit with the candy bar, hit with a lock, anything like that. So, you know, that's a real... That's a that's a that's a crazy situation right there. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me, and I'm gonna go into a situation that uh, occurred with me. And I actually got some for y'all today. I got a little I got a little something special for y'all today. Y'all gonna see. Just keep watching. So once upon a time, while doing time, I was I was at a phase. Once upon a time, where if you were not affiliated with exactly what I was affiliated with, I wouldn't even talk to you. I literally wouldn't even talk to you. I'm talking about unless, I mean, I would say the bare minimum. I mean, unless it's a situation like I'm trying to squeeze through this tight space, you standing right here, you not paying attention that I'm coming by. I might say, excuse me, bro. And then you move out my way and then I walk through. You know what I'm saying? Or we standing in the chow hall line. You standing in front of me. Your tray come out the flap. But you not paying attention. You looking up. I might be like, hey, bro, your tray came out. You get it. Simple stuff like that. Y'all see what I'm saying? But far as having a conversation with you, hanging out with you, uh, walking with you, anything like that. There was a point in time during my bid. I think that lasted for about, about a good 16 months. My, probably about 18 months, about a year and a half before my senses really kicked in. Now, when I say before my senses really kicked in, I mean before I learned that, okay, I went through a situation with the people that was affiliated with the same thing I was, okay? And the situation I went through was I was basically being backdoor. You know what I'm saying? Now, 
in certain details in that specific situation, I can't speak on. But I can kind of, you know, just give you a understanding of it, you know. So make a long story short, I witnessed something. I went and reported what I witnessed. And it was backfired on me as if I was lying and I was just making up stuff on the person. So that ended up getting me jumped by like four people. All right. Threatened to hit me with the candy bar, all kind of stuff. So once that happened, it was people that was a part of different groups that I had. Some of them I had already knew and some of them. I was cool with before I got on that crazy way of thinking where I'm like, I ain't talking to nobody unless you the same thing I am. The only reason I had that mindset is because I don't want to get real tight with a person. And then something happens amongst two groups and not me and you face to face and I got to do something to you. And it's like, damn, you a cool ass person. You solid, you 100. So to avoid that, I was just staying out of everybody's way if you wasn't what I was. Once I went through that situation, I learned that maybe in prison that matters, but in the real world, bro, it don't matter where you from, what you look like, what color you like more, what you affiliate yourself with. That saying, that old, old, old saying, real, recognize, real, that's real. You know what I'm saying? So... It was a few people that was a part of total different groups that reached out to me after I went through that situation. And they was on some stuff like, bro, what's up, bro? You straight? I'm like, yeah, I'm straight. They're like, I'm saying, bro, I don't care nothing about that. I know, you know, y'all is what y'all is. But at the end of the day, bro, I rock with you, bro. I got a lot of love for you, even though you be acting anti I know you solid, bro. You don't mess with nobody. You don't be getting, you don't be getting caught up in crazy stuff. If you do have a situation, I know you in the right. I know you not just out here doing nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, they was pretty much on some stuff like, bro, if you want to go pop on them folks with the candy bars, we riding with you. So I'm like, oh, hell no. Nah. Y'all tripping. Y'all tripping. <laughs> Y'all trying to get me killed. Hell no, nah, we ain't about to do that. You know what I'm saying? Another thing I had to learn, bro, it's not the group as a whole, like what it stands for, what it represents. That ain't did nothing to me. That ain't never did nothing wrong to me in my life, to be honest. It's just those particular individuals that just so happen to be, you know, a part of the same group. So, you know, I kept an optimistic mindset on stuff like that, far as the way I was thinking and stuff. But these people from total other groups was basically like, bro, them folk did that to you. Them, them supposed to be your folks. Man, I'll ride with you. We could bust them with the candy bars. So I'm like, hell no, nah, you tripping. We're not doing that. We're not finna never do nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? It's not the group. It's just these particular individuals. But these particular individuals just so happen to be a part of the group and they get acknowledged so I'm not even finna take it that far and do that. But once it was all said and done, it was allegedly like, it was, when I got jumped, it pretty much was dressed up like a violation. Like I got violated or something. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't no smoke like, oh, I'm about to go sneak him. I'm about to go do this and that to him. You know, I had pretty, after it happened and I sat down and thought about it, I seen what was going on there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't what they seen, bro. It's, it's, it's a lot of imposters, a whole lot of imposters. And seeing that I'm not even from this area, you know what I'm saying? I'm from a whole nother state way over there somewhere. So like a lot of the homeboy stuff that goes down, I don't really fit in that criteria, even though some people consider me to be from the city because I, I was living in Marietta before I got locked up. It's still like, you know, amongst self, they like. Even the ones who from that region, amongst themselves, they still looking at me like, man, he ain't from Detroit, he ain't from around, you know what I'm saying? So it pretty much was a, it was a situation where some individual, a group of individuals had some stuff going on, they ain't had no business going on. I only seen one individual, so when I went and reported that one individual to the other individuals, thinking we finna go whoop his ass, it turned on me, and they whooped my ass, and it was because... 
Later on, I found out that whole group that I went and tried to holler at was involving themselves in the same thing. So I just took it for what it was. Now, after that, as I just sat back and thought and thought and thought and thought, I'm like, bro, who the hell? It's like, this is the point where I started really falling back from it. Number one, I just went to think about my son, about my family and stuff like that. And, you know, I just went to think like, man, I don't want to get caught up with these dudes doing nothing crazy, mess around and catch more time. But, you know, I, I had love for it, bro. I just realized, like I was telling y'all, it's not the, the, the group. It's not the, the morals, the principles, the laws that was established. It's the certain individuals that just so happen to be a part of it is what becomes a problem. You know what I'm saying? So then I started thinking one day and I'm like, damn, the things that I stand on and the things that I take very, 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 very seriously. These guys don't. They don't stand on that same thing. They don't feel the same way about this organization that I feel because if they did, you wouldn't even be doing what you've been doing. Definitely wouldn't have whooped my ass when that happened. You know what I'm saying? So over time go by, I move around. You know, I'm in a different dorm, different prison. And then I start seeing a lot of little crazy, little funny stuff with people that is a part of the same thing I am that goes against what we're supposed to stand on. And it just kind of started making me fall back from people. You know what I'm saying? Like, at that point is when I didn't give a damn about what you was. Now, my circle has always been extremely, extremely, extremely small. I'm talking about anybody that ever did time would be a vouch for that. From the county jail to the day I walked out, my circle has always been extremely small. But, you know, just people that I would just chop it up with had a conversation with sometime, you know, just for the sake of getting to know the brother, we the same thing, all that cut off. I didn't even give a damn about none of that no more. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, I didn't even want to talk to people no more. And I started seeing all kind of stuff. I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Damn, bro. Like, and, and you know what's crazy? A lot of times it was a lot of the little stuff that used to annoy me, bro. A lot of the little stuff used to irritate me. Just dude sagging all super low always loud, screaming all the time, talking crazy, don't know how to control himself, don't know how to judge a situation without prejudice, don't know how to be calm, be patient. I used to look at that like, bro, that's not a representation of GD. It's not. And a little stuff like that used to irritate me. So like I said, time went by, bro. I didn't give a damn what you was. Now, I still wasn't going to get too, 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 too tight with you. But I would kick it with some people, be cordial with some people. It is some people that I have been knowing for a long time that are part of different groups. And um, that's what I did, man. That's what I started doing. Now, one day I was placed in a situation with somebody that I had been knowing before prison. I met this man in the county jail. He was not GD. He was a part of something totally different. And one day... I had something presented itself where there was an issue with some of the guys that were a part of the same thing I was and that particular individual. And matter of fact, I'm about to get him on here. That's what I said I had for y'all. And he's still in there doing time. He's still in there doing time right now. And he, he, he finally reached out to me. And uh, we about to get him out here. So hold up. Sit there chill. I ain't seen your ugly glass in a long time, my boy. Hey, man, you know how it go, man. We <laughs> down here chilling. Shout out to you. What's up? What's going on? Hell, boy. I miss your little long head ass. Ah! <laughs> I mean, that bald head of yours, nigga. <laughs> yeah. What's up with you, man? What What's you got up with you, bro? You all right? Yeah, chillin', man. You know how I go. Taking it one day at a time, bro. All right. All right. Damn, I, I can't even stop smiling. I'm like, damn, I miss my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about one big Kool-Aid smile. Damn, man. Damn, bro. 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 Dam
All right, so I was pretty much doing uh, a video. You know, I'd be doing a bunch of videos on there, just telling them about the real and all kind of stuff going on in the chain game, right? Yeah. No, I don't drop too much now, nah, but I, I I pretty much get them a good <laughs> understanding on what's going on. You feel me? Yeah, I give them nothing. Yeah, nothing that can, nothing that can, you feel me? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I was speaking on today about how crazy it is, like, with the with the homeboy situation stuff that go on, you feel me? Oh, a lot of homeboy stuff going on. <laughs> but I'm telling them, like, I'm telling them, like, the gang is really, like, run everything in the chain gang for real, for real, yeah. right? So you walk through the door, for say, bro, what's your name? They gonna say, bro, what you is? Bad, yeah. bad. They gonna be the first thing nigga hit you with. I'm talking about, I'm talking about shoot the door over before they grab your pop. Bro, what you will? <laughs> hey, like, and nah. then, and then coming after that is gonna be where you from. So hopefully one of your two answers match up to the dorm. <laughs> you won't get your ass whooped. <laughs> <laughs> and you better make sure you official, boy, because you ain't, boy, ooh, ooh. Well, if you ain't, ooh, I'm going to make a video about that. That's right. All right, so check this out. I was just telling about all kind of stuff. So I stopped when I told them that I've been placed in a situation or two like that, right? Yeah. So I thought about the situation with you in it. So I stopped right there, and I was <laughs> like, I'm going to come back to this. You feel me? <laughs> I'm going to get you on the phone, so. I'm about to tell y'all from the point where I stopped that. And I was pretty much telling them like this, bro. Whatever a person is in prison, whatever you're affiliated with, I was really speaking from my perspective. Like, yeah. I'm going to be loyal to that to the bone. But as you do time, you're going to meet people that's not a part of what you is that's rock solid. You feel right. me? That you're going to rock solid. solid. And then it'll be some of your own guys that you're going to be realizing, like, man, this man is a clown, bro. Like, he can't be that for real, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was just at the point where I was telling them that when I reached the point where I was kind of falling back from the gangsters, you feel me? But certain ones, you know, I'm gonna be locked in with forever. But just the way yeah. everybody was moving, when I really just like, man, I'm not on that clown ass, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, YouTube, Feezy family. We call it the Feezy family on here, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Straight up. Hey, I was running through the chain gang screaming, what the fees ain't? Come on, definitely. I used to tell you, man, that's a lame to death, man. That's what I'm saying. I told him, boy, you need to change your name, bro. <laughs> oh, they, they thought I was capping. They thought that's something I just got out and made up. Oh, man. All right, so look, Feezy family, back to the story. We just had to introduce my boy on here. Hey, you want me to say your name on here? No. Nah. It don't matter. You can say it. My boy T. Now, matter yeah. of fact, hold on. Before I get into the story, let me tell y'all the story about this. <laughs> I met T in the county jail, right? Back so, before we even came to prison. Before we even got to prison, I met T in the county jail. So my whole being, all the way from the county to the day I walked out, my circle has been very small. I never ever been the type to just every time you see me, you see niggas. It's never been like that. Nah. Am I lying? Nah, you're definitely not. So when I get cool with you, it got to be something like you got to be solid, brother. Cause I got a good judge of character. You feel me? Yeah. So we got cool in the county. And T <laughs> real name for whatever reason, I couldn't get it right at the moment. <laughs> So I started calling the man Terrence, trying to be funny, making a joke, and tell me why for the next damn near 10 years, I've been calling this man Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn now, I'm to my man like, hey, Then it's crazy, because it got to the point where it's like, I be like, hey, Terrence. And he like, yo, what's up? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. <laughs> but I think he's smart, though. I think he liked it that because people who ain't on, they try to figure him out. And they might be like, Bill, his name Terrence. I'd be like, hell yeah. And TV laying in the cut like, but that ain't even my name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who buddy is. <laughs> yeah. So we in the dorm one day, right? 
I'm not really too tough paying attention to much going on, but I know a situation that did occur. It was some of my guys, and I don't know if this was before or after. You remember the iPad dude situation? Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. Was that, that was, before? That was, nah, that was after. Oh, that was after. All right, well, that don't even matter. All right, so check this out. This is all I know. <laughs> I know I'm in the dorm one day on the big floor, walking around like I usually be walking around. Now I see, uh, uh, I see like two of my guys standing on the top range, and they looking real funny, and they keep looking out the um, out the window. Now one of them name is Ruth. Now, T, you know his name ain't Ruth, but I'ma just, you know, I don't yeah. want to drop no real names on here, so yeah. we just gonna round it up. Now he a little young dude, you know, he a little younger than me, and he just. Hot, bro. He don't want to listen to nobody. He just, I think what it is, he was one of them type that he going to scream, he going to get loud, he'll try to fight you. And a lot of people in the prison, every, listen, let me say this, everybody in prison not built like that. No, don't think no, just because somebody in prison, they just gangster tough. No, there's a lot of them in there that's soft as cotton. Ain't going to be cotton, boy. You would be surprised, like, how fast they these people fall. You would be like, bro, you a grown man, bro. You gonna let this? I don't right. understand it. So you got some people that, in a sense, you know, don't nobody say the word bully for real in the chain game, but you got, in a sense, they try to use, they like, if I go to screaming and, and all this, and then you turn down, and I kind of see fear in your eyes, I play on that with everybody. And I try to manipulate everybody with that, but everybody not going for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> so, I see the guys out there on the range. They keep looking down at the window. Keep looking down at the window. So um, they end up coming down the steps on this side. So now I see like another dude or two come down there. Now they are from the same place, but only two of them was my guys. The other two, they wasn't. They just was from the same place. They so was now you got like, huh? I say they was their homeboy. Yeah. So now you got like four people. They all from the same place. They on their homeboy stuff. But only two of them is what I was. So I see them walking over towards the front door. I look out the window. I see, like, some people. I see the officer down there at the gate. But I'm not really, I'm really zoned out in my music. I'm not really paying attention to who the people is. or You know what I'm saying? I'm not even thinking about it. So I come walking this way. So one of the, one of my guys said something to me. So I took the headphones off. I said, what'd you say, bro? And he was like, you going out there with us, ain't you? You finna slide with us, ain't you? So I'm like, slide? What the hell going on? <laughs> I, I'm dead serious. I'm, I'm really, real talk. I'm really smiling right now. Because I ain't seen my body right here in a long time. <laughs> you feel me? But I'm really dead serious, though. So he like, I'm like, slide? What the hell you mean? What the hell going on? So he was like, man, that T out there, T act like he about to come up here on this yard. If he come on the yard, we about to pop on him. So I'm like, T who? He like, T from down the walk. I'm like, from Atlanta? He like, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. So I walk away from him. I go look out the window. Now I'm really looking, for real, for real. And then I see T at the gate. So I'm like, but hell no. Nah. I'm not about to smile with y'all. Hell no. Nah. So. That's when I meant when I say a situation could turn dangerous because it could be on some stuff like my folks, if they was all on that, they could have looked at me like, oh, so she, you picking us out or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. But see, during this time of my bid, I had, a, I've been through a whole lot, bro. And I was mature enough to look at people and be like, bro, you really... To be honest, you really not what you saying you is. You feel me? You is a goofy. Even if you is what you saying you is, bro, you can't be my brother for real. You can't have no love, no loyalty for me for real. If you know I got a year or two left in prison, you know y'all got 20s, 30s, 40s, 50 years. You even trying to get me to participate in something too crazy. That's I know you, you really ain't for me for real. You know what I'm no, saying? Definitely not. You can't be for me for real. So... You know, he got like a little attitude or whatever when I told him, hell no. Nah. But I don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? So he like, he like, if bruh come on this yard, 
I'm about to do it to him. I'm like, you know, I'm trying to talk him out of it. He's like, nah, it already went too far, whatever the situation was. So, hey, I put my headphone back on, bro, and I just keep walking. I'm in the dorm. It'll take way too much to try to get out there and even try to persuade T, like, bro, I don't need, you know what I'm saying? So I just keep doing what I'm doing. And make a long story short, T come on the damn yard anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And make a long story short, nothing end up happening. So, you know, that's another thing. Like, the the cap is so hard, bro. Sometimes when a person, when a person really not built like that, like just say for instance, I'm really not built like that. But I know you is for real. And I'm acting like I want to do something to T. So what I might do is try to get you hyped up enough where you like, hey, yeah, come on, come on, let's just go do it. Because I know you're going to probably be the one to really do it. And I'll just be piggybacking off of you. So when people, when some people see that they can't really get that whole build up like that, that's when, you know, real situations expose real things. You feel me? And, uh, you know, that was a situation like that. Do you recall this situation that I'm talking about? I most definitely do. You know how I do. I was chasing a female, man. I went to eat stud buddy, man. I had two female officers, young girls. I, I was like, man, I'm finna go up here and talk to these boys. Hey, ain't stuff. That ain't what they talking about. Then I'm I saying. Me coming on the yard. I'm, you know, I remember me coming on the yard. I'm like, man, I'm finna go up here and kick him up here for a minute because I'm tired of being down there. I'm finna just go up here and just parlay for a second, talk to these females. You know how I go, nigga, be more to talk to these females. So, boy, I pull up. I'm on the yard. So, you know, I've been, I've been locked up a couple years. So, you know, I peep the I peep the movement, like, off the muscle. Like, I, I instantly see it. Like, what they got going on over there? You feel me? And I see the nigga out there. Like, like they come out, go back in, come back out, go back in. I'm like, these boys tripping. Like, what they got going on? They think they finna run down on me? I said, okay. Boom, but, but, but. One of my little homeboy, one of my brothers at the time, he was coming up the walk. So I'm like, bro, come here, bro. Come on, Jack, come over here for with me for a second. So boom, he came. So we just chilling. So you know, just like just like my boy uh Mr. Feezy said, he I seen him went to ask him, boom. So I see him, they come out there, he like to him, yeah, why you know you ain't supposed to be up here? I'm like, you right. I ain't supposed to be up here. So get with. If I ain't supposed to be up here, you supposed to be doing something about it. <laughs> so I, you know, I went to try it, he went to try me, we had a little stand out, did nothing ever happen. But it's just, it just like he said, the situation and how it played out. I'm glad it played out how it played out. Because it exposed him on his behalf. Like, but it didn't happen like that. And I'm kind of glad because, like, right after this situation, another dude got stabbed in my dorm. And I had to hurry up and run out the yard, like, like hurry up and get back to my building. See, you probably don't even remember that. Well, somebody the same day. Yeah, that same day, right after that. That one, uh, them four had no, you know, red red had no did that to the uh little crib nigga. They had no stabbed them up back. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Remember they had no rob them and took his phone. Yeah. Yeah, and they had no stabbed them up, so we went on lockdown right after that. That's crazy. But yeah, I, I was really just crazy. talking about, <clears throat> you know, how stuff happened. And then, you know, that that that, that homeboy stuff, it just happened again before I left. You remember with the, <laughs> with the Savannah situation? Oh, did. And I'm looking at it like, I'm, I'm, I'm standing there like, man, I ain't got how much time I had left. T about 30 days, 40 days? Man, I think you had less than that. I'm like, man, what are you doing, buddy? You need to, you need to go that way. You need to get out the way. What are hey, you doing? You know what? <laughs> hey, you know what, though, y'all? I'm going to tell y'all. Uh, that's why I say, bro, it don't matter what a person is affiliated with, bro. It's about how they cut, bro. I don't give a damn where you from. It's about what cloth you cut from, you feel me? I'm going to tell you a situation. Hey. Recently, right before I left. Now, at this point, I didn't even have 30 days left. I was literally Man, counting I'm, days. I mean, literally. I think you had like two weeks left. Yeah, I probably had two weeks left. So it's a TV room inside the dorm. It's early in the morning. I get up early every morning. I'm inside the TV room. 
looking out the just looking out the window. There's some guys out there playing basketball and stuff. <clears throat> I see one of my guys walking slow across, you know, the floor. So like out on the outside of the dorm. Now he got his shoes on. Now he about halfway retarded. Now if you see him with them <laughs> shoes on, listen. If you see this particular individual with them white shoes on, I promise you, his ass about to go do something. You got to keep an eye on his ass. Got so, to keep an eye on him. I don't know what he's doing though. I'm looking at him. Next thing I know, I see him do like this. He up the candy bar. Man. Now, you might not know, but we call the, the thing the candy bar on my channel. We don't say the real word. Okay. Okay. So he up the candy bar. This thing, you know, I see somebody like, trying to get out of there. Bro, trying to hit him with the candy bar. He done slip, dude, take off running. So instantly, I had on my flip flops. Instantly, I take off running ASAP to my room, threw my shoes on. Let some of my guys know. I grabbed my candy bar, took off running out the door. When I got out the door, T was standing in the little salad port area. You know what I'm saying? Him and probably two, three other people. Now it's me and some of my guys coming out the door together. And when I like was trying to go past T, he hit me on the arm like that. And when I look back at him, he said, Man, you about to go home. The hell you doing? <laughs> and bro, I had to really think about it, bro. And I say, damn, I'm really tripping for real, bro. And I went back in the dorm. I let them deal with it. I went back in the dorm, bro. You know what I'm saying? But you know that that's that's just how you know, bro. Who really care about you? Who who rock with you for real, for real? You know what I'm saying? A situation like that, I could have crashed out, end up got myself killed, or caught some more time like this. How quick it happened, bro? I'm talking about it happened so fast. I had to, I had to snap them back. Like, hold on, man. Why you finna go on? What are you doing, man? Yeah. That's exactly what I hit him. What are you doing? What are you doing? You finna go home, bro. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, Facts. I had hey, to let talk me... to him like he's my real brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Facts. Hey, let me ask you this question though. How long you been locked up? I've been locked up eight years. Eight years. All right, so I just did nine and just got out. All right, so let me ask you this. Before I even get to the to the ending, we're going to end it in a minute. Before I even get there, I just want to clear something up real quick. And you ain't yeah. even got to go into too many details. You can just tell me if I'm capping or not. I did a story about a Smith State Prison about a guy in the room right next door to me got violated in a, you know what I'm saying, type of way. Like manhood yeah. type, of. and a yeah. lot of people was responding saying that I was capping because it's too many open homosexuals in prison that that can't be true. So from a person being in there for eight years, have you ever heard of that happening to somebody? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Matter of fact, yeah. Oh, okay. As okay. a matter of fact, right when you left. Right before you just left, I mean, right after you just left, it just happened down here. No, you had Prill, you had you, man, you had a punk called Prill on one of the inmates, man. <laughs> and for y'all who don't know, Prill means Prison Rape Elimination Act. It's a number an inmate can call if you if you've been sexually assaulted by somebody. You can just go pick up the phone and call it real quick. So, you know that's that's you know I just wanted to ask you that. So let me ask you this. Because my channel, I like to tell these stories, but my overall goal is for the youth and the early adults about making better decisions and how important it is to stay out the streets, stay out trying to join the gang, this, this, and that. So let me just ask you this. Is it like the stuff you see about jail or prison in them shows and in them movies and people seeing prison stuff on TikTok people with phones, with, with candy bars, and they thinking it's all cool, like just on some real stuff. Is that something you think these young boys is really ready for nowadays? Man, yeah. hey, I'm gonna just tell you like this, like, it's, it's predator, either you a predator or you a prey. You you are, you around a bunch of murderers, killers, rapists, you around a bunch of all these people. 
So get with it. Man, you never know at any given time anything can happen, bro. So you just gotta be and then and then you know they be making it look good on the internet, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, like yeah, we doing this, we doing that, but get with it. Y'all don't see goddamn when they really run down and stab to death or when you be standing right here thinking, oh this nigga owe me two suits. And, 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 and this man taking this two suits all the way to heart. Like, I'm going to kill this nigga about my two suits. And you be like, bro, really? Two suits? Like, but at the time, the person ain't thinking. Like, they ain't thinking it's about no two suits. It's about the principle. Hey, like, folks and, don't even you see that part. And for those of you who don't know what two suits is, he's talking about two single packs of noodles. One pack of noodles that's probably 10, 20 cents out here on the street. He talking about two little packs of noodles. People done lost their life in there about two packs of noodles. Lost their life over, over, over. I'm talking about two ramen soups, two chicken noodle soups. <laughs> not funny. It's not funny. Y'all know it I'm ain't not funny, but it's that. true, though. That's, that's how we live in here. That's, that's yeah. how we live. Yeah. I mean. So, so I'm saying, like, like, because it's a whole bunch of, I'm about to tell you, it's like 22 some thousand subscribers, but it's a lot of younger people and a lot of like mamas and stuff that say, I'll be showing your stuff to my son. So for like somebody, let's just say for instance, from 15 to 20, and he don't got no criminal record. He in the streets thinking he gang, he got him a little tool or whatever, but he ain't got in trouble with the system yet. Like, if you could tell them anything, what would you say to them? I'd tell them, man, don't try to follow the crowd. Just because you see other people doing this and it look good, and they, and they on that type of time, that don't mean you got to be on it because, get what? They might be built for it, but you might not be. You feel what I'm saying? It's always a, di a different reaction for somebody else, bro. Just because you see this going good for this person, that don't mean they're going to go good for you. And, right. that, and with that being said, like, just make better decisions because I promise you, bro, you don't want to live this type of life. It, exactly. it, it might look glamorous. It, it might be, why my partner down the road doing that time? Yeah, woo, 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 woo. But get with it, bro. It's, why it get hard? Why you, hey, at times, you might call home, don't nobody answer you. Your stomach might be touching your back. You ain't got <laughs> nothing to my, you call everybody you can, bro. Just send me. Send me $5 dollars no no cash out, bro. Please, bro. Please, bro. Why ain't ugly? Why ain't... I got to take care of the kid. I got to pay my rent. I got to do this. It, just, it ain't worth it, bro. I'm talking about, like, you got to make decisions, and you got to think before you act, too, bro. Like, that was my problem. Like, I never I never thought before I act. I always just act. Reaction. It was already a reaction. Never think about it. You just got to think, bro. Do you really want to spend the rest of your... 10, 15, 5, it don't matter. Year 6, money, it don't matter. Do you want to spend that much time with somebody <laughs> telling you what to do? You a grown man. You got to listen to somebody younger than you. Or you feel what I'm saying? The same age, you telling you what to do. They tell you, go in your room and shut the door. You got to do it. And if you don't, they're they going to call some more people, and they're going to force you in the room and shut you in the door. And, you know and they're addressing you. And they're addressing you as inmate. Go in the room, inmate. 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 I got a problem with it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I got see, a he got, with it. See, he got a problem with the police now. We're going we gonna to have to do I another story on T. <laughs> the hell be giving it down. T, he's a dangerous <laughs> guy. I'm sitting back thinking about that one morning about that phone situation. I say, boy, T, hell, boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy, boy. boy. Yeah, I promise you, y'all don't want to live that life, boy. I, I look dope. every day I wake up, bro. I, I look dope. Oh, God. So let me ask you this. From the time, like, how old you was, how old were you when you think the very first time you ever did anything at least? Probably like about I was two like, I was about 11, 12. I was, I was young. I was young. Probably younger than that. No, nah, get away. I was like nine. Cause my first time doing it, I set a track hand on fire in some apartments. 
whole track hand on fire. All right, so let me ask you this. If you if you could like if your life could rewind, but you keep the mind you got now, you know everything you know now, would you live your life different or would you just keep doing the same oh, thing? Man, most definitely not do the same thing. Cause I don't see the reaction. I don't see how it's gonna play out. So why would I do the same thing? That'd be yeah. crazy on my end. That means I haven't learned nothing. That means yeah. all this time I done did it for nothing. Yeah. And man, I just be wanting to tell them, bro, like listen. It be fun on the street. I know the thrill for being in the street. I know it. I done lived it for a long time. Boy, it's a good thrill. <laughs> but once you leave from that and you go into an isolated area where, what I say, 90% of the time, you lonely as hell. And I don't mean lonely like you in there by yourself because there's people around you. But I mean the people you really give a damn about your family. You don't see them every day, bro. You know what I'm saying? Bro, every single day, when I was in the hour. every single day, I literally went to sleep, used the bathroom, took a shower with my candy bar. Because how dangerous it is, you never know it can happen at any given moment, bro. Like every day, any given time. every morning I'm waking up like, uh, saying my little prayers to the most high, keep me blessed, keep me safe today. You know what I'm saying? Anything can happen. It gets. You get so depressed in there, bro. You just sitting and sitting and sitting. Then don't let the dorm go on lockdown where they lock you in your room. And then your roommate be in there stank, man. Don't have no big boy. He like a boy and, 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 and do number two all day. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, it's, hey, Ooh. hey, hey, see, you be about ready. You be about ready to start something with him on purpose, or the police got to get one of y'all out the room. Oh, man. I'll tell my, uh, I'll tell my soon they come to the brother, man, what's up, man? Yeah, they doing all these, making all this noise. Like, man, what's wrong with y'all? Let me get this nigga up out of here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was up, bro, man. Yeah, bro, I just, it's so many teenagers out here messing their life up, bro. I just feel like a lot of them ain't got guidance, because that's what a lot of us was missing, the right guidance, you feel me? So, that's more definitely what I was missing. If, I was missing guidance, bro. Like, if I would have had, if I would have been looking up to somebody who was doing something positive, I probably wouldn't be in the situation I'm in. But, you know, life is yeah. all about choices and decisions. Yeah, you, gotta you know make how that. the right one, though. Huh? I'm telling you, you got to make the right ones. Yeah, that's why, that's why I be stressing, uh, make better decisions, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, man. Y'all know y'all got to make, I got my little merch, bro. Say make money, not excuses. And uh, y'all just got to make better decisions, bro. You got to do better, got to move better. I promise you, you will have a, okay, I'm 28 years old. It might be an officer, 21 years old, telling me, inmate, get in that room. Shut up. What, what you going to do, inmate? But they actually say way worse words than that. I just don't want to cuss because I want to be able to monetize my material. But they'll really be cussing yeah. you out like a like a dog, you feel? Yeah. Me? And when you take flight on them, it's double jeopardy for you. Number one, you finna get your ass whooped by a whole bunch of them. And then number two, you finna get some more time. Facts. They pressing charges. They yeah. might they might kick it. Oh nigga, we can hit. We can do this and we can do that. Man, soon you put your hand on the phone, them folk pressing charge. They're gonna beat you up, stick you in the box. In the hole, and they're gonna pray towards it. Most definitely. So another, another, another big question that came up, and I want you to uh, just elaborate on this a little bit, then we'll get out of here. When I be telling a lot of stories, a lot of people be like, "So where the hell was the police? Where the hell was the police?" So I tell these people like, "Bro, man, sometimes you might not even see the police." <laughs> so they like, somebody <clears throat> told me. That's not true, cause the police do their rounds every twenty minutes. So just, 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 just elaborate on that, man. If I were dirty, I'd go show y'all the booth right now. Well, like the dorm I'm in right now, these folks ain't nobody in the booth now. I'm to my life. And then sometimes when stuff happens, they might be in the booth. They might see it, man. Them folks ain't been running down and try to help nobody. Them folks gonna wait till you come to buy that door. And pop that door so you can get out. Or the person who injured 
can can get what they need to get some medical attention, but man, them folk, man, you hey, be surprised. But I'm saying, what if it's one of them days, like, you know, one of them days I done pulled up on you, we been in the day room chilling, and I be like, damn, T, I look at my watch, but it's been four, five hours, no officer. I'm saying, what if it's a day like that and somebody just got hit with the candy bar a hundred times? What they going to do? Just bleed out, be stuck in the dome. Didn't nothing die. Yeah, they, 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 that, that, that why the murder rate done went up. For real, for real. Because it's the, it's the lack of the, uh, uh, help and the, or, the, or, the, or the police. Like, you don't see them. Like, you don't see people for five, six hours. You be like, man, you might get locked in the room. You be in your room half for the day. Because ain't no office. Like, yeah. where the police at? You might get locked in the room at nine in the morning. And you might not come out to four in the afternoon, five in the afternoon. You be like, these right. folks been gone that long? Yeah. They been, they been missing their action. We don't know. Hey, that's just the way it is right now. That's right. Crazy, but... Hey, you know, you know, uh, about the wet the fees and thing. I was running around and screaming wet the fees, right? I'll show you yeah. how serious I take this thing. <laughs> he got the brand. He got it branded, man. No, I'm real. I'm proud yeah, of him, man. Hey, that's what I call it. I gave him his personal nickname, man. I call him Bill Bill, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, I that got the, Bill Bill. I got the house shoes around here somewhere. I think I left them out there. They, they say the same thing on it. Yeah. That's right, though. I'm about to, I'm about to jump off this, but, bro. That what's up, bro. Hey, man, all y'all see, bro. Bill fees. I just did nine. I just got out, not even three months ago. This my, this my brother T right here. He did eight. It's still in there, bro. It coming. You hear it from the yeah, horse's right. mouth, bro. That place is not yeah, a place to be, crazy. bro. Huh? That's I'm not a place to be, bro. I hope y'all take heed. What y'all lock down? Nah, I just got the dope pulled up. Oh. I hope y'all take heed to this video, bro. I hope it really motivates somebody to make better decisions and to understand that, you know, the path they headed down that's not where you want to be. I promise you. Get what? Listen, <clears throat> you might be soft on the streets, right? You might be soft. You might not be built like that. You might make a mistake, get locked up. But people on the streets will spare you because it's like, oh, man, that's such and such, bro. That's such and such, son. He's soft. He ain't, ain't nobody doing that to change. They're going to take advantage of that. Oh, he's sweet. He's soft. Go rob him. Take everything he got. Oh, he right. just said something right. slick. Go beat his ass. They're going to take advantage of him. Yeah. Every trip. Most definitely. So, with that being said, man, y'all young brothers, y'all sisters, young sisters, y'all just tighten up, bro. You know, like I say, make money, not excuses. And I'm about to end this recording. All right. Hold up. My phone about to die. I'm on. Two percent. Gotta get up out of there. I don't have to be busy. Let me try to stop this recording. All right. All right, that love, bro. All right, that love. I'm pull up on you. All right.